but there's a can you still talk about other can I talk about trailer Cthulhu and Dolly? It's 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 gaming related. Live now, look at us. Oh, wow, there's already 24 people in. <laughs> oh yeah, I should tweet the same thing. This is good content. As usual, as per usual, Leader Games curating the best live content. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I know, like, streamer streamers that, like, that's that's the first two minutes of their show, too, so. Maybe if we had some, like, way that a robot could handle that, or. This, the, the good sweet money, yeah. We're not, uh, like, like, I'm a senior game designer. I'm not a, I'm, I'm not even that. I'm, like, a. Studio executive. I don't, I don't got time to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, for Lang Alliance intern. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it says there's no audio from Cole. Yeah. I blame Brooke for this. We're talking on, on Discord. I had a pretty good chub shaving yesterday, I gotta say. <clears throat> so this is even, this is the height of professionalism. Oh, here we oh, go. I, can, I fixed I can it. Hear I fixed it. I fixed it, everyone. I'm sorry about that. Um, uh, Brooke fixed it. It was f funny. We, we were talking. I just I hadn't I, un I hadn't unmuted my audio channel, and I'm sorry. Um, oh. Well, we were just talking about how unprofessional our streams are. <laughs> that, no, that, we that, nailed it. We, we, we hit we hit the landing. <clears throat> well, well, all I was going to mention is you know like my so my my, my youngest brother started. Um, I'm going to move the camera so we're more centered. Started streaming on Twitch, and in the course of, I don't know, like, uh, how long has he been doing it? Maybe three months? Um, his streams are so good. He's got effects. He's got zoom-ins. He runs a second Ooh. camera. It's fabulous. And um, our streams are me uh, just sort of, like, hobbling through OBS. Right. Yeah, I, I actually have used OBS enough. I could probably take over and do some of that. But yeah. anyway, because I've been doing, I did that one weekend stream. And yeah, I well, a lot. there'll be more, I'm sure. All right. Yeah, so cool. Let's talk about design a little bit. Somebody else asked about uh, the cost benefit of Kickstarter, which we, we can get to. Oh, the cost benefit uh, of Kickstarter. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess by way of introduction, um, welcome to our monthly oh. design stream, right? Uh, so our, this is something that we've like done but we're, we're really trying to make it more regular and it's not like we have no announcement. So sorry to the folks here who might be like hoping for a secret announcement. This is just the thing we're going to try to do once a month. You know, what is this? The second Tuesday of the month? First Tuesday? I don't know. Um, it's the second Tuesday. So maybe this is going to be our second Tuesday design. Screen. The plan was the first Tuesday, but yeah, it seems like the second's working up. <laughs> the second's what, what, yeah, what, what it's going to end up at. Yeah, something like that. Uh, and, and so we're just going to kind of talk about what we've been up to, and we're happy to take any questions you might have about anything relating to games or any other kind of media that you might bait us into talking about. Yeah. So, uh, so Cole, you have been, um, you've been busy in the studio, um, and we're both working on Root right now. What are you working on for Root? I am working on kind of the other root stuff. So like 
root projects are always like studio projects. We have, there's just a lot of moving pieces and well, like, you know, I think that some of the, a lot of the new content is being uh, done by, by, by you, Patrick. And then there are some other little things that I'm kind of helping out. And uh, what I'm hoping to do is I'm working on these, these minor factions. So last time we had a design chat, I mentioned on the stream that I had been sort of like thinking about these minor factions in a very loose way, and maybe they were a bad idea or a good idea, or I didn't really know how they would work, and then I was going to test. So I'm going to turn in my homework today and say that I've been testing them a lot for the past month or so, and that they work. They work pretty well. Uh, we're, we're, not, we're not sure yet. This is a thing that we're going to put in the, the, the new... Um, the new Kickstarter, I want, you know, more people in the office to play them. Patrick actually hasn't played them yet, which is fine. You know, you know, there's a lot of, um, Patrick's got a lot of other stuff on his plate. Um, and, and I'm excited to, to hopefully get, get them on, on, on the table for him this week. But basically, uh, the minor factions, um, maybe the, like this is the way I should explain it. So I, I started by thinking about setup because uh, root setup is not very modular. Uh, it uses this like alphabetical priority system, which is fine, but if you start trying to build in like a faction draft, it's just a little clumsy. And so I've been uh, doing, building something which I'm calling like root advanced setup. And the main thing that it does is it gets rid of corners as a concept in the rule book. So instead of like picking a corner, now I'm sort of working out this concept of like the homeland clearing which is a clearing that uh, you put starting tokens and buildings in. And then critically, other players can't choose to start in homeland clearings. Um, so, for instance, the Cats Advance setup right now is that they pick three adjacent clearings on the board to be their homeland clearings. They then put their three buildings among those clearings. And then they get two warriors each in those homeland clearings and then one warrior everywhere else. So, you know, uh, people who've played a lot of Root will know like, hey, that sounds like the cats have a, a slight balance change, just a little bit more warriors. And, and that's true, but it also has to do with the fact that if they're starting in the middle of the board, uh, they're going to have different pressures on them. And then mm -hmm. the Eerie setup goes from pick an opposite corner to the cats. Um, so you, you can't do that anymore because maybe the Eerie is going to set up before the... Uh, you know, before the, before the cats do. So in order to make these independent, I'm kind of redrafting the setup rules. So the Eerie's advanced setup says um, you have to start on a board edge that is uh, one of the ones that is farthest away from any uh, homeland clearing. Now, in a three or four player game where a lot of other players uh, have already picked their starting locations, there might be uh, one or two or even three starting options that are, that let's say they're all, you know, one or two clearings away from, from the most homeland. But in, in a lot of traditional setups, it will create something that looks a lot like the traditional root setup. Uh, but the, the, the intent behind this is that what, what I'd like to see is that when you do the plus one draft where you select let's say you're playing with four players, you select five factions, then players take turns picking them, that the moment you pick your faction, you set it up. Um, and then that other players can then react in their draft depending on how the board is shaping up. And it can produce, I mean, even it, it was so, so interesting, uh, Nick and I started playing this in the studio. It was so interesting how much the game changed when you put the keep in the middle. And like I had, I, we'd experimented with some versions of, of that kind of setup very, very early on in Root, but it, it was just too hard to test. It was like too much variance, right? I don't want to like suddenly have to test Root where, where the keep can be anywhere. Yeah. And also on those early Root maps, the keep was drawn into the map. Um, so the, uh, I, I think that now that the, the, the game is a lot more stable and we have a lot better understanding of how the system works, we can experiment with really dramatically different setups that are going to mm -hmm. open up a lot of other things. Uh, and then I don't want to talk too, too much about this, but then uh, all of those things then feed into how the minor factions work, which are these like kind of small versions of factions that the players can sort of uh, bid and control. And there's a bit of a... a um, a resource game around them. I can talk more about them than later. If folks want to hear more with the minor factions, but um, I think basically the way I'm thinking about it is like the setup and the minor factions and the draft, all of these systems are kind of actually just one system. And then our hope is it's broadening out some of the core elements of root so that it's easier for us to plug in some of the new factions, in, uh, like the ones that you're working on, Patrick. So like, let's uh, someone is talking here and I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. 
Um, but it sounds like this is going to be a big change to the game, and some players might, some games might be decided by by placement, poor placement. And I want to iterate that I, from what I understand from Cole, this is the advanced game setup. Yes. And it's not what you use every, like, it's not, you would not learn the game this way. This is for when you are facing, scoring off against other players during a tournament situation. This is to bring the factions a little bit more into line with each other as far as how placement develops the game. Now, yeah, of 100%. course, if you're playing at home and you're you're past your fifth game, go right ahead and use the system. But yeah, you're not, this isn't your first game. Yeah, the, the setup, like the, the traditional setup, which is on the player boards, that's not going anywhere. Because no. th that setup like tries really hard to make sure that players can't like be screwed from a starting position. The advanced setup like will create opportunities where there are additional risks in setup. That's part of like what, what it's supposed to do. Um, yeah, but yeah, definitely not for folks for their first game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been working on the um, the high reach factions. What are we calling them technically? Uh, I think they're, they're high reach factions. I think you, you can call them militant factions, but they like I don't know how militant the badgers are, right? But I, I don't yeah. know. They they have lots of wood and they have a high reach value. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, they have lots of wood. I was like, no, the only the cats have wood. Now I get it. I'm on I'm on the same page as you. Um, yeah, so we, um, yeah, so I've been, um, uh, playtesting with the, um, Warlord quite a bit, and I wish you were broadcasting your camera to s Discord, Cole, if you can, because I'd prefer, I'm, I'm, like, talking to oh, the Twitch, I, Twitch screen, can I, you I, not? I, I can't do it, or my camera uh, shuts off, I don't know. Uh, Alright, that's, that's all good, okay. Um, I'll just talk to myself then in Discord, um, <laughs> as usual. So, um... Yeah, so I've been working on the Warlords, and uh, the um, it's coming along very well. Uh, we've played uh, games in studio like every day, every other day um, for a couple weeks now. And uh, Josh Usley has been helping with early development. Um, and that's been great because I'm so busy right now. It's giving me the ability to say, here are the changes I want made. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, go go work on those for a little bit. And then we can come back and play it. Um, and we've been we've been playing with those uh, just yesterday. So we're at the point where the the board is done, and I'll probably show something pretty soon. I don't mm -hmm. see. I don't know how. What your I've forgotten what your schedule calls for about when we're going to release it. But um, so that so that the board the player board's developed and the pieces are on their way. Um, we have been playtesting with a new die for the Warlord, mm -hmm. and um, but doesn't control combat at all. It just has to do with something else. And uh, now we're at the point where we're drilling down into like, how does each character card, uh, because of course the Warlord is represented on the board by a specific character, and they have cards like the Vagabond does, so how does each character card uh, impact play? And um, that's been interesting, and we're starting to see some... You know, I, I tell Cole early early on when he worked with me that like my kind of my goal for every role or faction in a game like this is to give them two or three pillars to stand on strategically, even if they have to go to both. And and it's you, you know how you play the game is how you balance the two, uh, or if you do have to just pick two diverging strategies. And uh, I'm starting to see kind of a uh, there's we're kind of seeing like a slow warlord who consolidates, puts mm -hmm. down strongholds, takes his territory very deliberately or their territory very deliberately. And then we're just seeing the like hot out of the gate, uh, just trying to crush everything he can before he hits. There's kind mm -hmm. of a mid game slump with the warlord. And is that fun to have a, you know, like, is it right. fun to, to, to have a mid game slump? Um, I think it's fine. I like it. I'm, I'm kind of like, yeah, you have to, you have to get as much as you can before you start, you, before you have to re, re uh, build your empire. And I, it's kind of cool. Um, but we'll see, you know, we'll, of course, testing about that. But I like that we're starting to form two paths mm -hmm. of sort of of sort of uh, how to develop your position, and and I, I like that. So yeah, the, if there was a third, that'd be great. But you know, but here we are. And the warlord is mm -hmm. like already like quite good. It, it it was really fun. I mean, sometimes, I mean, I think as folks in, in this in this stream know, like sometimes this stuff takes a really long time to develop and to work out the kinks, and sometimes things snap into focus somewhat quickly, and then the the, the challenge of development is about keeping that focus and making sure that we're thorough, even though it feels like it's close. The, yeah. the warlord has snapped into focus really fast. Um, there are a couple uh, questions from the chat, which I'll, which I'll get to presently uh, in terms of schedule for releasing. I think what we'd like to do 
is have something like a print and play kit, uh, mm-hmm. and, and uh, maybe a, 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 a little, maybe we can put it in the, the, the module on TTS as well, uh, hopefully ready by the new year, maybe sooner. Um, and, and that way, you know, I mean, I think that we probably could have it ready sooner, but for on our side, it, we, we want to make sure that when we uh, put this online and people can play with it, that we can also answer your questions about it. And, and so it, it's not, I, I wouldn't want to do that like right before Christmas and then all of us leave and then, you know. No, if there's a really like accusatory Reddit thread about me on Christmas Day, that would be the, That'd be I just, think the most ideal. It's yeah. just a miracle. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then, um, so someone asked about Nick's involvement. Obviously he's not, he's not here on, on the stream. He's just over there in the in an office ne- next to me right now. Um Nick will be coming onto the project in a little bit. So he's been working on the Fort expansion, uh, which is going mm-hmm. really, really well. It's actually, we had a great game of it this morning. And I told Nick at the end of it that I'm like, this is almost done. It's, it's feeling very, very, very close. There's a couple little things that need adjusted and figured out and some more testing, but it's feeling very good. So Nick's been working on that. Uh, and he'll probably finish that within the next few weeks. And then as that finishes, he'll start coming on and helping out with, with, with the root stuff. So he'll certainly be here. Um, and then, uh, someone asked about the, the product profile, the like table space of the minor factions. So the minor factions are conceptualized as being small. They don't use a whole big player board. Um, and this is like to lift the curtain a little bit, um, factions and root are kind of hard because we can't sell them in like blister packs because they have these giant player boards. So they're just like, they don't let, like, it doesn't really, they don't lend themselves to selling major factions individually. We might find a way to do it at some point, but we don't really have a good way to do it now. And so the big box expansion that then gathers a bunch of content together is kind of our best way of getting factions to y'all. One of the things that's fun about the minor factions is that they will be maybe the size of a tarot card tuck box. So, you know, just like maybe this big or so. Um, And in that tuck box, they'll have all the pieces you need. A minor faction might have, you know, a few tokens, some meeples, and then all the rules will be on their board, on the, the reverse side of their board, and then the other side of the board is used for play, or, or, or something like that. We're still working on the exact form factor. But our hope is here that, like, what, one thing that we could try to, that we might try to do is introduce the minor factions in the new expansion box. So the expansion box would come with, like, two big factions and a few minor factions. And then we can we would also then have additional minor factions that folks who were you know who wanted wanted to, to grow that part of their game could grow and folks who didn't care for them wouldn't have to wouldn't have to worry about the minor factions too much um the 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 thing that i'll say with the, the minor factions is that they like when you play with the minor factions you introduce uh, a few new mechanisms to the game so they're not totally modular you can't just like drop one in um, but basically what, what, what they, what, what, how they work is there is a, um, an influence system where players, uh, earn influence for being bad at root. Uh, basically if you're losing the game, you generate influence based on how badly you're doing. And also if you are the subject of a bad role in combat. So if you're, if the dice are rolling and, and this was really, I mean, Patrick had a very good suggestion when we were thinking about the two player game that like root has this really essential problem when it comes to two players, which is that if, um, if someone has a bad role, there is no third person to adjust for the swing of fate. So the influence system is uh, sensitive to that. And basically in combat, if uh, for every zero, if a zero is rolled, um, the defender, the person who was hurt by that zero in most cases, is going to get an influence point. Now those influence points, uh, they are coins that work in a little zero sum bidding system that you can use to take control of the minor factions and use them. But critically, um, you know, if you take control of, let's say like the mole minor faction, and you build up their capacity and they get really strong. And then you start winning the game and you start losing your influence edge. The player who you're beating is now going to get control of those moles. So you have to be very careful and kind of cagey about how you how you uh, use those factions. Um, and the other thing that the minor factions have added into the game is the ability to bid on turn order. Not exactly turn order, but whoever is going to go first each round. This allows for some very tricky um, initiative plays where you can you can have a, essentially a kind of double turn if you're in last and then you buy the, the, the first turn marker and then you get to go first again. And, you know, as anyone who's played the Corvids or the Woodland Alliance knows how devastating a double turn could be. 
Uh, and it's, it's sort of like our ultimate thing to give players who are like in a bad pole position. Uh, but we also don't want to make it, you know, it's, you know, I, I get, I get hesitant when I start talking about like catch up mechanisms, because in, in one respect, some of the minor faction stuff is a little bit of a catch up mechanism, but what, what it's doing is I want a mechanism like that to make the rest of the game more interesting. So, uh, our, our hope is, you know, basically, um, and I'm kind of, this is what, what I get for not really, um, prepping a bunch of stuff about these minor factions, but uh, my hope is that it, it populates the game at lower counts. So with two players, you'll put three minor factions in the mix. With f with three or four, you'll use two, and with one, you'll probably... With five or more, you'll just use one. Uh, and it, it can give you that feeling of um, a busy root table with a lot of interesting uh, sort of things to explore on it, even when you're just squaring off with one person versus another person. Sorry, I'm now I'm not ch ch checking chat. Yeah, um, so am I. Yeah, um, I'm curious to see how first moving first person up or down is going to be interesting. Uh, yeah, so that's what we're working on for the expansion, and we have a few other little surprises. We've been talking a lot about the form factor. Um, mm -hmm. I think we didn't talk about tearing the band aid off, did we, Cole? No. Do you want to tear it off? <laughs> I guess we're going to have to someday. Uh, the turtles are no more. Yeah, uh, sort of. Yeah, they're sort of no more. Yeah, they're, they are now badgers. Uh, and it's totally just an artistic choice. Uh, we the, Pretty much the rules will be the same. But yeah, they're going to be badgers now. Um, and uh, that'll be, they'll be a little bit later than the warlord. The warlord's further along. Um, but yeah, I just I just need to get into the swing of testing them. I haven't I've only been skirmishing them against bots, and that's informative, but it's not like it's not it's not the real game in mm -hmm. in terms of that sort of testing. So we're working on that. Yeah, yeah, it was so interesting. Like the thing about the the, the turtles is it's actually a good example of the studio doing what the studio does well, which is like, you know, is there an aesthetic problem? And so Kyle, you know, Kyle kind of summed it up thinking about the question of like, how does a turtle wear pants? Now that's, it seems kind of small and like, obviously there are ways of the turtles wearing pants, but a concern like that is a real concern because the, you know, this is a, this is Kyle's world and that we're all cr helping create and play around in. And so we want to make sure that everything is like of a piece and that we don't get lazy in our theming. And like I like the idea of turtles, and I think that they thematically kind of like matched well what, what the faction was doing. But I also think that like the the, the comments about like how they're how are they gonna look? I mean like root is so mammalian, right? Or you know, even Yeah. Even even the, the, the lizards, you know, have like a lot of um you know they don't they don't they're they're less lizardly lizardy than they might otherwise be right i mean obviously they're walking upright among other things um <laughs> and, and so i think like we want to try to make sure that everything in the setting is gelling really really well uh and so that, that may mean that the turtles become badgers or that the badgers become something else these are things that we have to kind of sort out yeah 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 so yeah so nobody send kyle hate mail well. yeah, yeah 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 exactly that's, that's really what, what i'm trying what i'm trying to say in so many words no, I it's I didn't even like honestly I I just changed the words over and like thought about the mechanics a little bit and I'm like no it's fine and then made new meatballs and got on with my life so yeah it's all good it's like trove from bath trove to vast I just once I heard the word I was like oh okay that's fine yeah I mean was, you have to pick your battles in these things right <laughs> like you can't uh, Kyle said he will he will fight you so okay well there's a Reddit thread forming about Kyle right now. <laughs> Uh yeah, so that's uh so that's what we've been working on for that. Um, boy, we should probably start talking about a title soon. Yeah, we don't have one of those yet. Mm. All right, well we'll get we'll get right on that. Uh, in so other words, in other places, you've been working a little bit on Void Lich in the mm -hmm. last month. How's that going? It's going well. We have like Void Lich is in a really interesting place because the core design is pretty stable. I have to build a new combat system, which is something I love doing, even though I know I'm going to build it and then use it for four months and then find a new one and then change it again. 
Um, but uh, that is your MO. That that is my MO. I I build something I really like and then I have to unbuild it. Uh, but uh, Voidless just started getting a little bit of art, and we just kind of started some of the theme conversation and thinking about the look of the game. Uh, I'm excited because I think next week I'm probably going to sit down with Patty and start talking about the like the graphics and like well, do, do, not not in any specific way, but just sort of thinking about like how should this game like look or feel like well, what is a leader game space game like communicate and then uh, as we've been doing some of the theming uh, patrick has this big document i'm going to use it as a prop it's it's thick it has a lot of pages um that has did all you, of did you print it uh yeah i printed it oh my god really yeah uh, i printed yeah, it I wrote on this september in one, 28th I, I, this is how i roll i wrote that in one crazy weekend too I, I, although I realized it was funny, I was looking at the Google Doc and I realized you had added a bunch of things to it after I had printed it. So, you know, it, it may Whoops. not be the, the most current. That's why I always date things when I print them. Um, yeah, yeah. If it's a Google I, Doc. Yeah, my family was out of town and I got lonely. So I, I started writing Void Lich material and, um, and that, that's what came out in that timeline. So uh, we're doing, oh, go ahead, Patrick. No, no, that's fine. Uh, so, so we're doing something kind of interesting. Like Patrick presented this like very fully formed world, um, but the the design of Void Lich calls for like atomizing that world essentially. And so, um, um, because like, and, and you know, obviously, all this is subject to like a million changes. So, right, you know, don't don't get too sad. Um, so uh, the the kind of idea or the conceit or a part of this uh, of how the, this iteration of the design works is that players begin the game in a position of almost perfect symmetry. And then by the end of the game, you are more asymmetric than vast or of vast levels. So then what I started thinking about is I went through all of Patrick's setting and started thinking about uh, instead of all these things being like a single set piece, like a big diorama or like the cover of the Twilight Imperium box, which if it wasn't so heavy, I would hold up in front of the camera right now, where you have all these like peoples and things fighting. I started trying to atomize that and think about them like, okay, how do I arrange these cool things in plot lines? And then, I'm, I, so I'm trying to work through and think about like, okay, in this plot, these things will happen and I can kind of tell this part of Patrick's story in, in this way. And once I build a framework for that, I can turn it over to Patrick and then Patrick can start generating a bunch of content for it. We can, we can hash it out and kind of have writers meetings about how it should, how it should comport. Uh, w one of the things I said last time um, about the design for Void Lich is that all of our designs are reactions to the previous design. You like can't help it, right? Like root mm -hmm. is a critique of vast, TMM was a critique of Root. Root Underworld was a critique of both of those. Oath was a critique of kind of everything that we had done. And with Void Lich, the, the thing that is on my mind is Oath. And the, the things that Oath, I'm like trying to take the, the lessons from the parts of Oath that really worked. And I'm also trying to do things that Oath could never do. And so um, the like metaphor that I'll, that I'll use, that, that I, I use all the time in studio, is that Oath is like very gradualistic. There's like you know, a mountain slowly builds up, it erodes. And Void Lich is more like a narrative switchboard where you like can switch like 10 switch, all, all the, these 20 switches have on off positions. And it, you, it, that allows me to be a lot more jagged in the design and do really, really like dramatic reveals. The kind of stuff that like Oath can do, but only in a implicit way. And Void Lich will make it much more explicit. So I think Void Lich is going to have a, like a pulpier feel uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm really excited to work in that space because Oath was very serious sometimes, even though Oath is also very silly. Um, I don't want people to mm, get the wrong There's no pie maker. There's no pie maker. I have the art to it, or not, but it was never, I mean, the art from the, the pie maker card, uh, it, it was from the weird version of Oath's art that was a little more like Nordic that we, yeah. that we dumped. Um, but I really like that pie maker. And there are a lot of pies enough. There's a lot of pigs too, which I'm ex I, the pigs are adorable. So. Yeah, they are. I look forward to looking at more pigs. Um, yeah, that version of it too was it was interesting to see how it up for me. It was like eight card pursuit, and they all do a little bit different. That's gonna be exciting. But here we are, two hundred mm -hmm. cards, and they all do something a little bit different. So, um, yeah, and so I'm really excited about Void Lich, and I'm like like I'm trying to build into my schedule time where I can get back to just working on content for that so that'll be interesting mm -hmm. uh, irl the rest of the company you know it's like 
we're, we've got a lot going on too, so I'm, I'm trying to like manage all the all those things at the same time. We even toured a building yesterday, and we decided not to buy it, but it was like, that was getting kind of real. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Uh, so that's Void Lich. Um, what else are you working on? Uh, people, let's see. What else? What else am I working on besides that? So there've been lots of little things. I'm, I'm doing. I've been helping um, coordinate some of the RPG stuff, which I saw people asked about. Um, it looks awesome. I just read the first part of the first book that they have the the final proofs in, and all the art's done for the RPG. Actually, that's a big thing that's happened since we last talked to everybody. Um, the RPG, all the art is done. The text is very close to done or in, or in some stage of layout. Um, it looks really awesome. Um, you know, I like my role on the project is mostly to make sure that everybody has what they need to do their work. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not testing it. I'm not a huge RPG. I like RPGs a lot. I just, I don't have the ability to test them. Um, and so my, mo my biggest goal is just to like read through everything and gut check it. And uh, Root has kind of a funny setting. There are things that you can talk about, things that you can't talk about. And I am so impressed with Brendan's work and the work of the people at Magpie because I don't really have any problems with how they've built the, built out the world. Uh, they have fleshed it out while keeping a lot of the core elements of Root like completely intact. And it's been pretty wonderful. So hopefully that will be. I think uh, I'm not. I'm not sure what, what what the dates are are on it right now, but it's it's going really well. And it looks amazing. Um, but yeah, but outside of that, I don't know. We're, I mean, I think most of my time is in Root or in Voidlet right now, and we're just kind of pushing through the, those projects and getting some other stuff, other stuff ready. Um, don't ask where the leather comes from. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't ask where the leather, or, or, or try not to pay too much attention to the hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, someone asked about five player or a larger board for root. Um, yeah, we're definitely, uh, that's, that'll be the other focus of the project. We just haven't talked about it much yet is um, how to expand the board without a ridiculous amount of work. Mm -hmm. um, and we are, um, I, we have a proposal that I really, um, I'm pretty excited about. So I think we'll, I think we're going to run with that. Um, should we talk about that proposal or should we still keep that under the, no, nah, I think we can talk about it. Oh yeah, that's fine. All right. So, uh, recently I worked on a, um, underground map for, uh, root. And so what it is, is it's four layers and each layer has three clearings on it and then they connect with each other with, um, you know, like ladders or stairs or whatever, whatever, whatever used to connect levels. And then the river runs through all four layers. And kind of the idea then is that we will publish that those map as four separate pieces. So you can just use that as a, you know, 90% of people are going to play root with four, three or four players, probably, and maybe 80%. And I, the two player is way more than I thought it was going to be. And um, so for those people, great, you have a new map. That's, you can use it straight up for that. Um, but you can also take the middle two platters out and kind of how like the small world tunnel map connects the two boards together. You can use tunnel entrances. Well, to call them caves or something because you can't use tunnel because that's already reserved. But so you can you can walk from cave to these underworld locations, battle inside of them and then come back out in another part of the forest. Uh, and so in that way, you can make your map 15 clearings or, I mean, potentially 18 if you want to just, if we want to come mm -hmm. up with somebody to stack both of them up. So we're working on, uh, we're working on that. Um, uh, I'll be working on that. That'll be the next thing I work on um, mm -hmm. after I get the two factions ready. <clears throat> yeah, we're, we're, we're in a good place. I mean, when it comes to like schedule, for instance, we're really trying uh, hopefully to have something kind of like earlier mid Q1. Uh, for, for our Kickstarter, and then Voyage will be in like late Q2 probably. So. I, I already have a thread on BDG about that map if you want to read it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can drop that yeah, in I'm the a, chat. Let me let me find um, it. Someone uh, asked me about changes to the Corvids and any other balancing changes for Root. So um, this is a bit of an open question, but it is something that I am treating as an open question rather than a closed question. Um, there are some very small balance adjustments that I'm putting in the advanced setup. Uh, things like the cats starting with a few extra warriors just based on how, they're, how they set up. Uh, another kind of obvious one is uh, giving the lizards um, some starting acolytes and changing a little bit of how their, their setup works, which, which will help them quite a bit. Uh, honestly, not putting the lizards in a corner is a big help to the, to the lizards too. Um, 
the, we, we may be doing a little bit of tinkering with the Vagabond. Um, we haven't yet sort of gotten that proposal together. We actually have, a, there are a few different Vagabond proposals, um, and I, I, like, I like all of them. Uh, I don't know, you know, what, what weird alchemy of those we, we might go. Uh, Corvids are probably good. I don't, I like, I love the Corvids. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not feeling there. I haven't seen a, a need demonstrated to, 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 to mess with them too much. I'm not, you know, I, what, what I'm hoping. So basically, uh, one thing on the back end is the, uh, there is this amazing discord called the Woodland Warriors discord, which, uh, I'm sure many of you are, I recognize many of the names in this chat. So I know you guys already know this discord. It's an incredible discord. It is sort of becoming an official leader games discord. Uh, and we are going, well, what I would like to do is we are going to be, um, pitching all of these changes to people who play on the, the, the Discord and sharing all of our development notes with them and sort of bringing them into some of the balance testing. Now, I know that Discord has kind of its own meta, and it's a little bit different from other metas that we've demonstrated. Um, but I, I just want to make sure the whole community is kind of involved in these things. And so it, it's the kind of thing that, like, for instance, if, if there is, you know, need for a, a small Corvid adjustment, I'm not, I'm not in principle against any of that stuff. I mean, I think... You know, um, yeah, and actually, I, wow, Corvids are actually at zero win, win rate in both tournaments. So sad. Come on, Corvid players. You can do better than that. Um, <laughs> thanks, Carrick. Um, yeah, and I, uh, it, it, we will be posting links to the Willow and Warriors Discord uh, soon. We're, 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 we are uh, getting a little fancy. We're going to get some nice graphics up there. We got some, some new features we want to put in. Um, yeah, I know. Corvids are, 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 in, good, are in good shape. The, the, this is what I mean about being sensitive to metas too, right? Because it, they're in very conservative point-denying mem, uh, metas. Uh, certain factions do a lot better uh, than others. And I can see the Corvids uh, doing badly in, in those metas. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm, I'm trying to address... Um, the tournament balance questions through setup is that I think that uh, creating different setups, uh, an organic drafting setup, is going to uh, jar some of those metas. We're like, man, you know, play a game with the cats where you can put the keep in the middle of the map. It will change your life. It is a small adjustment, but you know, suddenly, you know, if you put the keep at the fox clearing with five connections, you're in a different, you're in a very different kind of game. Um, so I want to, I want to kind of open, open some of that stuff up. Are you Still? back, Patrick? Cool. Yeah, sorry, I had to. No, no worries. I had to. Um, we're selling some board games, and I had a quick discussion about that. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's it. Yeah. So I um, I've been working on a few things still. Um, a couple weekends ago, I had live broadcasted a game of Castle Blood, which was my co-op brooded dungeon crawler. Um, I've been meaning to do more of those, but. Um, after about a 13 month search, my spouse and I have settled on a house that we want to buy. So we are um, currently in the process of moving. So it's, you know, I have like pack, dream, pack, stream, I better pack. Um, so that's that's going. And I'm still trying to pay as much attention to the company as I can. So it's a little, it's a little weird. We are, I mean, you know, we'll get movers. So it's not like packing super important, but stuff, some things put away. Um, so I've been working on that. I have been. Um, uh, path has been temporarily shelved uh just just not for lack of interest just for lack of time and then um kyle uh dropped this idea on me saturday and has been eating my brain um since then so i've been i've been working on what to present kyle and cole as a re as a response basically we've been talking about what would we do with the legacy of vast going forward and how to present vast in a uh, easier to learn format and um i think kyle just kind of took some of what we've said and his own ideas and made this incredible pitch for vast uh and um and i just yeah i've just been in love with the idea since then so i mean basically it's like work on root get it to the point where you need to play test wait for the play test okay the rest of your time you're going to be working on this mm -hmm. uh, working on this project so um so yeah i'm, I'm really excited to show them um, something i might 
I uh, might do that soon. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that's all. Is that all I've been working on, Cole? I think that. Yeah, that kind of sums it. I mean, there's there's always like, I think, even with as much of our time that gets spent mm-hmm. on design, a lot of the other, a lot of the time, a lot of the days are get filled by kind of other things that come up that have to be run, and like. Playtesting is not, I was thinking about this this week because I've, I've had to miss the last couple of root tests and uh, playtesting is like not designing. And so like sometimes if we're playtesting a lot of things, I'm like, boy, I don't have time to design because I'm working on development and working on playtesting all this time. So I think you know, right now the schedules are pretty full, but I will just underline what Patrick said about the, some exciting proposals with the vast space and some things that uh, are kind of very early on, but are still being kind of pushed, pushed on yeah. around. Um, we are in, I mean, and there's something I'll, that I mentioned last time we chatted and I'll, I'll say it again, you know, what we've got a, like a really full and exciting year. I mean, we're going to be running like we've got the root Kickstarter and then we're going to do another Kickstarter for uh void Lich. And then, uh, there's a, a Ford expansion, which isn't going to Kickstarter, which will just be a direct, a direct expansion. And then we have another product that might be a direct thing. And then we are cooking on some projects that would pro- you know, in, including a, this potential follow up to vast that are like 2022 projects, but you kind of have to start cooking on them now. Um, if you want to yeah. m- m- make that, make that happen. Um, and you know, it isn't say that all this stuff is done, but there's just, I don't know, you know, we, um, we, when we're thinking about projects to do, um, one of the, the biggest priorities, you know, we have to ask ourselves all these questions about the, the projects, right? Like, are they urgent? Do we feel like we're the right studio to take on certain projects? Um, but we have a lot of latitude right now to do interesting and different kinds of projects. And what, what is so exciting about the, the vast fall that Patrick's talking about is it's a stretch for us. It like is working out different muscles than we've gotten to, to work out. And so that's very, very exciting and kind of liberating. Yeah. And, and yet like, wow, it's like, so, so reduces the formula and it'll be, it's so far a much smaller footprint. So I'm very excited yeah. about, about working on it. So. Uh, someone asked about an oath, like the oath expansion, obviously what I'll say about, I mean, and I'll just kind of underline something that I, I always say about oath, which is, uh, I am very happy to work on more oath stuff if there's r- good reason to. Um, but if oath never gets an expansion, y'all will not run out of stuff to explore for a very, very, very long time. <laughs> um, and you know, is it, what I, what I'll, what, what I say internally sometimes is that we kind of think of our games as in cohorts, right? So we have like Fort and Oath and um, maybe Voidlich, let's say, are, are in a kind of cohort. And one of them needs to do really well or like moderately well to maybe deserve an expansion or something. But on, only one of them needs to. Uh, and even if one of them doesn't and they all just are moderate hits, then, then we're okay. But I'm always thinking about it as like a creative uh, portfolio. So like... You know, after after we finish these, maybe it'll be like Path and th- th- this new sort of like vast reboot project and th- this other secret project we're working on. And you know, who knows w- w- what's going to happen? This is like an investment portfolio, right? We we want we want everything to do well, of course, but you're not going to expect every single thing that you work on to do exceptionally well, right? And I think thinking in these cohorts kind of breaks you free of like wanting to put the whole. Uh, burden of success on a single title yeah but i'd call my boat rude if i named had one to name <laughs> <laughs> i'm teasing um yeah so that's that's uh that's what we've been designing so i wanted to circle back to something with you cole mm-hmm. and i it's as i work on as i work on the proposal for this this project kyle pitched um I didn't want to use a name because it's like, that'll become the name. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, but like... I, so something you said to me struck me at, earlier. And that was, we talked about how we were redesigning, we're doing this advanced setup, which will redesign the game a little bit. And it, and I, I thought I've been thinking a lot about this because the, the name of this game is going to be modularity. And that's, I think that's where a place where vast may have failed to deliver, right? Mm-hmm. Is we can't, it's harder to be modular and vast than, than we were expecting. And um, 
and and so like that's that's what we run into with root right it's like we learn so much from the first 10,000 rule and you know, words of rules and and the first eight factions mm-hmm. that there are things like if we redid if we had a magic wand and could just redo root right now it would be very it wouldn't be very different but it would be different like there would there would definitely be changes we'd make and and some of that we can get away with like some things we can change mm-hmm. and i and i've been thinking about that as i move forward with this new project it's like it's, i was like oh i gotta make this modular i'm like no i can just release new rules in a year um you know, as long as it comes with whatever the next release is, like we've been doing. So I'm like, how do you feel about that? Like, how do you feel about, you know, the permanence of what we're, what we're doing? You know, like we don't want to adopt a high frontier model, right? But we we also right. want to like not to criticize high frontier, but it's you know, no, but but there's like this it's changed a lot. <laughs> I I mean I think this is like a central question that I still am like unsettled about a little bit. So. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe like the the way I always break it down is like, are living rules a good thing? And, you know, one way of thinking about that is like, well, of course, like the game is being supported. Uh, but on the other hand, um, it's hard to know what version of the game you're even playing. Right. When you oh, got, it's the... got rated. Oh yeah. Yeah. Get, get in here. Rating party. Um, you know, w- when you're doing, uh, when you're doing the living rules, it's like, are you fracturing, your audience? Are you like creating new lines? Are you exhausting your players? Are you using your players as playtesters? I don't know. There are all these kind of like icky things associated with it. My biggest problem with them, I think, is that products can become kind of blurry if they get too modular. And so when you're doing, and it isn't to say modular design is bad, it's not. But I think that there is this limit where you start to lose version control. And Mm -hmm. High Frontier is a great example of that. And I actually, I just got my copy of the fourth one High Frontier for All in the mail, and they did a really good job. Um, mm-hmm. I have like my only complaints about that production are like trivially small, so I won't even get into it. But they did a very good job to say like, okay, we want to like get everyone on the same page and say this is High Frontier, and this is how it all fits together. And mm-hmm. and and you know you don't worry about are you playing first edition, second edition, second edition with the Errata. Second edition with colonization. Like, I mean, like you play the third one, or are you doing the third edition with, some, you know, whatever. I mean, High Frontier got very, very complicated. And I sometimes think about um, one of the great unsung um, tasks in, like, one of the great unsung monuments of gaming was when Avalon Hill built Advanced Squad Leader. Because Advanced Squad Leader has this reputation for being, like, very complicated, and it is. Mm. Uh, and having like literally a, a three ring binder for rules. Uh, but they, Avalon Hill, Don Greenwood and his team, I'm not sure who exactly was on that, that team. They were faced with a really hard problem because they had this runaway success with squad leader. They had mm-hmm. expanded it with these modular modules, but the core system like really wasn't built to be expanded very well. And so the only thing that you could do is sort of like start over and rebuild the entire system in a way that was like infinitely expandable. And mm-hmm. you can play squad leader still and you can play advanced squad leader. And there's a kind of a clear break. So my, my preference for these sorts of things is uh, when possible, make a clear break. Sure. We, we, which is like a long way of saying like what we're working on isn't or what Patrick's working on, like isn't vast too. It no. may be something different that is responding to vast. Just right. Like, yeah. Yep. Yep. I, agree. And I think yep. that, uh, and then it, like it becomes clear. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I have egg all over my face because I'm like, I made a second edition of my Afghanistan game, that's like sort of totally different, but it was important when I started working on it. I remember there was a moment where I was like, oh, I can't make an update kit anymore. Right. And that was a really critical moment where I was like, actually, update kits are awful. Like there needs to be a kind of clear thing. And there are all these ways that like. That doesn't work in root space. Root is a kind of its own thing. We could you also, a, all due respect, you have a very different audience for. I mean, they they overlap quite a bit, but yeah. I think the audience of Pax Premier is more tolerant of change. Oh, in that, t- t- totally. In that way. C- compared to the audience of root. Well, I mean, in, in root, like I I don't. So Garrick joked in this chat about root second edition, mm-hmm. and maybe someday that happens. And mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not even necessarily opposed to the idea, but like. I I like Root. I think everything that Root needs to do, it can do within its current edition. 
like I and, and so root is this like very strange living product where let's say we do change the vagabond. We will make yeah. sure everybody gets a vagabond board who wants one. Right. You know what I mean? Like that's like that's just our to our promise to y'all. But is that root second edition? Well, no. I mean, the, these changes, I mean, I, I think sometimes when folks talk about the changes that happened in the third printing of Root, it's easy to get out of proportion mm-hmm. because these changes are like comically small. We like moved an icon back a little bit. We like made like a few word. I mean, they fit on a single sheet of paper and, you know, maybe they're like 200 words of, of changes. Bears and dogs, Kyle. That's what you wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And that's why that's why when you started and I was very careful about like not publicly saying edition ever. And yeah. always using the term printing because I feel like if we did an edition change, you would know we didn't edition. Like we're gonna change the game uh, yeah. for whatever reason. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and so that's and so I've been thinking about that. My, you know, conversely to what you said though, my classic. Um, I and I've told you this example. You probably gonna roll your eyes. Um, I used to play this miniature war game called Cornopia, and it had. The design team who made it sat down and they planned out all six of the factions. You know, it was like Warhammer where you buy like a, a species of miniatures and then they fight, you know, like so the humans fight elves and the elves fight orcs and whatever. And um, they, they sat down with it and they had a very specific goal that if, if a special rule was going to be used by more than one unit, then they gave it a name and they put it in the core part of the rules, core section of the rules. And... And so then if a, if a unit, if only like, so like if the, the humans had this unit called a judge and he had a special rule for himself. And if he was the only person who used it, then it was just in the judge's rules. But if two groups had that rule, then it would be, then it'd be propagated up to the main rules. Mm-hmm. And the problem with that then is once they started expanding the game, of course, uh, they, they started like saying, these are the rules for fire. Like this unit causes things to go on fire and here's the rules for fire. Well, they had to put that in every like every unit that used fire then had to have that description and the description for fire was probably 400 500 words and so it was totally unwieldy that every you know every rule book from then on just had like this like four or five times here's the rules for fire and it was uh it was very silly so that's that's what i'm thinking about avoiding is how do i how do i you know yeah. use make, make enough generic terms that i can expand into this game and not work and not fight that sort of thing well and we've been doing this kind of work in sort of a sneaky way so one example i think of is um the lizards have a mechanism in root for revealing cards. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then originally that rule was not located in the core rules section, the kind of first four or five sections of the rule book. It was located just in the lizard rules. But when the moles started using a similar reveal system, mm-hmm. we had to pull that rule out of the lizard rules. And then in my, we, I mean, Josh did and put that rule in the core rules as like a, a term of art. Right. Mm-hmm. And so like, the, what, what we're trying to do is is just curate the system. I mean, I, I sort of think about our relationship with Root as like very custodial now. Mm-hmm. Like there are a lot of people who really love this thing and we want to do right by them. And part of doing right by them means keeping the game in print and adding content that they want and, and thinking about, you know, and, and, and trusting ourselves to build that content, right? We're not just going into fan service mode here, right? They like part of what they like about Root is the stuff that everybody on staff has brought to the game. Um, but another part of that is making sure that the system doesn't get bloated and that we are sensitive to like any balance adjustments. And so I, I mean, I really do think of Root a little bit more like almost like a video game than like a board game in terms of how it grows and evolves and, and, all, and changes. Like it's, you know, it, I, I just think that um, it, it, it has this really active community and it's this really modular system and those two things kind of work together. Uh, and so it's not, I mean, it, it, it is interesting how different it is um, from some of the other games I've worked on. Whereas like with, with Pamir and with, with the John Company work I'm doing, I'm trying very hard to be like, this is the definitive edition. I'll give a small example of that. Uh, I made a transcription error in Pax Premier. There's a card called the Wheat Fields, which um, should be, uh, it should place like two blocks, but it only places one or the, the reverse of that. Uh, the reason for this is because I, I typed the wrong number in. Um, but we did all of our testing w- w- with the card as being a little off. And it, it's not often any, like, it breaks no rules that it's off. It just doesn't quite fit the pattern 
of all the other cards. It's like if, you know, imagine if the diamond suit contained a zero card instead or, or a one instead of starting at two like the other suits. And so uh, Drew and I had the opportunity to fix this card. And I said, you know, like it is this way. It doesn't hurt anything that it's this way. All of the testing we've done has it this way. So it's going to stay that way. That like between printings of the second edition of Root, uh, second edition of Premiere, basically nothing changed outside of some small uh, clarifications and adjustments to the bot. And Root is different because if we run into something like that, uh, I'm going to fix it, right? Like it's just, that, that's the thing that's necessary. And it's interesting. We, we, what we're trying to do is adapt even how we think about like rules adjustments to this new world where we're trying to curate our titles so carefully. And so uh, one thing that we've started doing with Oath, and we haven't really talked about this publicly yet, but we are changing how we do rules questions. So normally when a game releases, uh, the staff will plan on spending time on the Board Game Geek thread and answering mm -hmm. rules questions. And we still do that. But we have now created a Google form where if you have a rules question about Oath, specifically like a card interaction, you can fill out this Google form and we will get it, and J Josh is in charge of that right now. He reviews it, and he'll make a ruling and let you know. But then, if your ruling elucidated something about the game, a card interaction or an interesting edge case, we can put that on our online FAQ. And so already, um, we have this massive uh, and intricate uh, interactive FAQ for all of the cards in Oath, so that you can see how the cards interact with different rules in the game. And our, our hope is that we, we can just make the game as as it is, make it as, as easy as possible to get answers to your questions and for players to engage with, with, with the game. And, and part of that is accepting the fact that like these games are of course going to be supported and change and grow as their player bases do. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, I could go, I could go a long time. About, about well, no, stuff. I mean, it's fine. We're, uh, we're talking about design. So I, um, someone asked if there's going to be a spring and summer board. No, Maybe. isn't the lake how, like kind of? I don't know. The lake was, but the lake and mountain were supposed to be spring and summer, and um, we just decided to move away from that naming convention, so mm -hmm. we didn't get, so we didn't get through four seasons and then go mid spring summer, like as the next naming convention. Uh, so now we're naming them after geographical features, and um, that's too bad. Uh, but you know, you like the theme of the autumn board, so it's because it's pretty. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. That looks... Any other questions? Someone, there's been a couple of questions about if we're going to get off Kickstarter. Uh, oh, yeah. You want to talk about the, the cost benefit? <laughs> the cost benefit of Kickstarter. Yeah. We make every copy we sell in Kickstarter, we have to sell two or three less other places. So it's going to be pretty hard to get off Kickstarter. Yeah. We have full time um, jobs. We have full-time jobs now. Our, our company, pay, our, yeah, our company is strong because of Kickstarter. I have to pay, uh, you know, four hundred one ks and and uh, and dental insurance and things like that, which I happily do. I'm not sad about it at all. But uh, yeah, we have to. Um, we're we're in a position where we have to be focused on how we make money, and and that's that's part of our strategy. But it just gets so much further too. Yeah, Ford I did very well though. I mean, for a pre-order, we did we did pretty well on it. But I think we could continue with that. But. Even like if we think about Leader Games as being an established game company now, like mm -hmm. no longer a, a spunky indie startup or whatever, like maybe yeah. a little bit more established, right? We have four hundred one ks. That's pretty. Um, that, that, that 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 that's pretty metal of us. Um, you get you get quarterly bonuses. I, you get quarterly bonuses. Um, despite having like an established platform and marketing outreach and all that stuff, the amount of exposure we get in a Kickstarter campaign is colossal. It's huge. Yeah. It like, so every once in a while I'll see a think piece of someone being like, well, if you look at the money, if you would have just spent that on ads, I'm like, you have no idea what you're talking you about. Have, you have no clue. <laughs> like there, yeah. there's, there's, you get, it is such a, such a big platform. And so, you know, when it comes to the new root Kickstarter, um, it, this is going to be about both, of course, like showing stuff to existing fans, but also like bringing new people into the into the fold. It's funny. It's funny too. After I started the second printing Kickstarter for Root, I got an email from somebody who was very passionate about marketing, and they were like, "For the five percent you're paying to Kickstarter, you could have just run it as a pre-order on your website." Which, by the way, is really hard to do because the credit card processors are very leery about how you 
how far mm-hmm. in advance you can do a uh, pre-order. So you know, like you, you could have done that, and then you know you could have saved yourself five percent. And I'm like, yeah, by giving up ten, you know, like ninety percent of my sales, I could have saved that five percent. So I, yeah, it's that's not going to change anytime soon. I do agree that getting off of it is, uh, you know, it's like. Uh, in case it goes away for some reason, then mm. it's it's good to be ready for that, and that's part of what the you know the fort like us learning that business process and developing that that part of our strategy is fine. But it is not something you can just shut off with the switch, and so we're working we'll, yeah. we'll work on that. So yeah, and um, I like I mean I still like it. It's like like you, it's gathering our audience together. It's mm-hmm. it's fun. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. It, yeah. I I I, lo- I love Kickstarter. It's great. It's a great platform, and it I think has done the hobby a lot of good. So we are just about out of time. Um, I'm going to make a public commitment, which I've not vetted with Patrick at all. And so he can tell me this is wrong. Um, the next design stream, should we say first or second Tuesday, Patrick? Let's do first Tuesday. Uh, because yeah, that's, yeah. That's, so, yeah, that's fine. So what Jan- day is it? January 5th. On this design stream, Patrick and I will show you how to play the new root stuff. And there will be a kit. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, let's do right. That. I think we could do that. It, it, it'll be ready. So I mean, uh, I, 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 I'm already putting screenshots of the warlord on Twitter. So on Twitter, just right now. All right. I mean, as right long now. As, yeah. As long Keep as you want refreshed. to answer those questions, it, it'll be there any second. <laughs> um, yeah. So January fifth, uh, there'll be. You know, I don't know if everything will be in TTS by then, but it'll be around then. Um, and we'll have some new root stuff to show, and hopefully by that point we'll know when the Kickstarter is going to be. Uh, and we'll, we'll have some kind of fun announcements there. Uh, and yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, this is, uh, at, you know, as you know, Patrick and I are both very much on Twitter. We're happy to take and answer any questions you might have there. Um, or just, I'll, I'll give you no such thing. Um, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Patrick. Or just post about me on Reddit and I'll eventually, yeah, I'll someone eventually. will tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I've, thank you all for joining us. Thanks for all your wonderful questions. I, um, man, I'm so excited to show you all the all the root stuff we have in store. It, it is so like Oath was a delight to work on, but it was a very um, solitary project. Like it was, a, we had a very not solitary, but we had a it was insular. We had a small team working on it, and it was so all encompassing that while we were working on Oath, Oath was really the only thing that we could think about. And because Roots established and because this is a much more communal project, it's so nice to be able to like play the Ford expansion in the morning, work on some root stuff, dream about an oath expansion. But yeah, so I'm, I'm very excited that we're, you know, we get to stay in, in this mode for at least the next several months. I like the idea that I was like, Cole, here's your ice shelf. Go sit on it and work <laughs> on oath. No, it was, it was, it was the other way. I was working on benefits and stuff, but and yeah, yeah, having yeah. a kid. Yeah. So well, cool. the, the, the fact there was a pandemic yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that kind of that kind of hit our schedules too. Um, yeah, and I you know I worked on a couple experiments this summer that didn't didn't quite pan out, but uh, uh, happens. It happens. As my four as my four year old says, happens. That's that's great. <laughs> that's fantastic. All right, All right we'll take care, everybody. Yep. Have a lovely Tuesday.